This stuff's great in soups, stews, fried rices, on its own, you name it. This kimchi's delicious, and we're gonna make it. We're gonna start with our Napa cabbage. I've got three medium heads of Napa cabbage here. This should be a pretty snug fit once it's salted and broken down in my six liter crock. I'm gonna chop this up fairly large. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on your preference, or you could do it the traditional way and leave it quartered. Next, I'm gonna make my brine. I don't bother measuring this. I just go for something a fair bit saltier than pasta water. Next, in our largest vessel, we're gonna pour all of our brine onto our chopped cabbage, and we're gonna get in there and mix everything up and give it a good massaging. Remember, the final texture that you have here after crushing it with your hands is gonna be the final texture of the kimchi, so go until you're satisfied. We're gonna leave this in the brine for about an hour and a half to two hours. While this soaks, let's get started on our sauce. To a small saucepan, add half a cup of glutinous rice flour and two cups of water, and cook over medium heat, stirring constantly until it looks something like this. Next, we'll add three to six tablespoons of gochugaru, more or less depending on how spicy you like it, six tablespoons of gochujang, a quarter cup of sugar, a quarter cup of fish sauce, three tablespoons of ginger and two heads of garlic, crushed, two tablespoons of crushed dried shrimp, and mix that up. All these next vegetables are optional. You can throw whatever you want in there, but I'm gonna go in with one small daikon and one large carrot cut into batons and one Korean or Chinese leek per head of Napa, sliced diagonally into thick pieces. Lastly, we'll rinse our cabbage a minimum of three times and tightly wring out all of the excess moisture. Next, we'll add all of our cabbage, other vegetables, and sauce to a bowl and mix until everything's evenly coated. It should look something like this. Last thing we need to do is put it in our crock. These guys are great. You can find them secondhand all over the place. I got mine on Facebook Marketplace. If you don't have one of these, you can use a food safe opaque bucket for this. Just don't use anything reactive, so no aluminum or no steel. As we fill the vessel, we want to be constantly pushing down to make sure all of the kimchi is submerged in the sauce. It's important to know that kimchi is a lacto-ferment, meaning the main bacteria we're trying to make feel at home here is lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is an anaerobic bacteria, meaning it survives in the absence of oxygen. I like to fill a freezer bag with water and place it on top to make sure that everything stays submerged under the water. You can also find fermentation weights online or use a ceramic dish depending on your vessel. Now, if you don't have a fancy one-way airlock, just throw a clean rag or some cheesecloth under the loose-fitting lid and let it sit in a dark, cool place for two to six days, checking on the second day and every day until you're happy with it. Abrupt ending for viewer retention. Like, comment, subscribe, stay sharp.